The Springdale had gone down, something in the suspension had snapped, and the trailer was sitting on top of the tire. We pulled over on Highway 101 in the pouring rain after just having crossed over the Astoria Bridge from Astoria, Oregon into Washington. Just 12 miles away from our camp at Cape Disappointment, we were so close, but yet so far. It was time to get on the phone with AAA to see what could be done. The passenger side leaf spring had snapped. There was nothing to do but wait for the tow truck to arrive. Super Duper Andy hooked us up and uh, we are limping our way over to our campground, Cape Disappointment, which is not a disappointment tonight, is it, Miss Catherine? No, I can't believe we're gonna be able to camp at the campground, which is a big relief. Otherwise, it was gonna be a turnout just on the side of the 101, which is super busy. So it'll be nice to at least be comfortable in the little home until we can get it someplace tomorrow to be fixed. Our tow truck driver, Andy, was kind enough to follow us to our campsite to make sure that we made it safely after MacGyvering a little rig to get the trailer rolling and off the road. Our campsite at Cape Disappointment was absolutely stunning and right on the beach. Unfortunately, we really weren't in the mood to fully enjoy it. We were pretty exhausted and would have to get up early in the morning to deal with the trailer. I did take a few snapshots of the beautiful sunset. Okay, a little update on the trailer situation. We were able to get off the road with the help of an awesome towing company and an awesome tow truck driver named Andy. He MacGyvered with this tow strap and a block, which I'll get under there and show you. Uh, he MacGyvered this to get the trailer off of the tire and we were able to drive it. So we've been kind of limping around, but uh, we got it limped over here to Fort Stevens State Park and uh, Les Schwab in Warrington, Oregon, who is, has ordered new leaf springs, which should be in today. And hopefully we can get this repaired today. That's what it's kind of looking like underneath here. So yeah, we had a very bizarre situation because we had crossed over from Astoria, Oregon into Washington on the Astoria Bridge. So we pulled over off the side of the road in Washington. However, on the Washington side, there are nothing but small towns in the general vicinity. On the Oregon side, you have Astoria and Warrington, which have a little bit more in terms of a city, <laughs> I guess. We called AAA and we kept getting transferred. We got transferred from the Oregon club to the Washington club, and they really didn't know what to do. So on the Washington side, a Washington tow company came over and they were awesome. So they got us to the point that we could actually drive the trailer. The only person that could fix it for us or the only company that could fix it for us is on the Oregon side. So we limped back across the bridge onto the Oregon side and went over to Les Schwab. They ordered the parts for us and we are currently at Fort Stevens State Park, which is only about five miles from there. We're just staying put until the park comes in. So that's where we stand right now. It's warming up, looking like blue skies down by the beach. Mm -hmm. Yay for blue skies. We're taking a little walk to the beach here from the campground. It will do well to calm my anxious nerves. I think I'm going to be a little anxious until the truck repairs are all done, or excuse me, the trailer repairs are all done. So it's looking like uh, the sun's poking out, which is really nice since it's been raining pretty consistently. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like a nice day. The birds are singing already feeling more relaxed.
the day is looking up. We just got a call that the parts are in so we can come go in two hours earlier. And I just saw a bald eagle and it's a beautiful day. <laughs> I was so thankful that they had the part in Portland, Oregon that was available to ship overnight so the boys at Les Schwab could have this fixed up lickety split. This is a look up at the Astoria Bridge. We're about to drive over that thing. And that's what we went over a couple days ago with Kat's camper sitting down on top of her uh, back rear trailer wheel never a good thing especially when you're a couple hundred feet up in the air this is right about the spot we were pulled over on the side of the road on Sunday three days ago and finally three days later we arrived at our intended destination just in time for sunset Travel and adventure is my life, but sometimes the adventure doesn't turn out quite like you expected. Like for instance, this week when my trailer broke down. When things go wrong, I really need to stay focused and energetic to deal with the task at hand. And that's where AG1 comes in. It helps with focus and energy and also stress and mood balance. And with their convenient travel packs, I can prepare it anywhere, even right here in my truck. In a life enhanced by excitement and wanderlust, AG1 brings a simple yet impactful daily wellness routine with 75 ingredients that can help fill nutritional gaps. With the type of lifestyle I lead, adventurous, I need to keep my mind and body in tip-top shape. Adventure season is just beginning, and AG1 is not only helpful for when adventures go wrong, but it also keeps my body running like a well-oiled machine for the more rigorous and fun adventures that are about to start happening all throughout this season. Featuring a combination of prebiotics and probiotics alongside vitamins, minerals, and other whole food ingredients, the formula supports your gut health, which can often be disrupted by travel, busy schedules, and long days on the road. AG1 is a perfect travel partner for me. It not only benefits my gut health with prebiotics and probiotics, my overall health with 75 vitamins and minerals. It also helps with stress and mood, focus and energy, and I don't go anywhere without it. If you'd like to try AG1 for yourself, go ahead and click that link below or scan the QR code here and they will give you five travel packs and one year supply of vitamin D3, K2 with your first subscription. Thank you once again to AG1 for sponsoring. Now let's get back to the show. Well, we made it. We made it to where we were initially headed when everything went wrong. <laughs> I am currently at the Kalalak Campground in Olympic National Park in Washington. It is located about 35 miles south of Forks, Washington. It is a gloomy day, full disclosure. I shot the sunrise shots uh, a couple of days ago, but today is gloomy and rainy as it has been over the last two days. The good news is spectacular weather is on the way. We have one more day of the gloom and rain and then it looks like beautiful weather for the entire week ahead. I am not going to lie to you, this past week has been a really weird and stressful past week. So much has gone on and uh, I've shared some of that with you. I am so thankful that I had Joey with me to 
have the foresight to pick up the camera because things like this have happened to me on the road and the last thought that I have when I'm in the middle of a stressful situation is to pick up my camera and start filming. Also, I was on the phone dealing with AAA. That was a whole other situation, but yeah, I'm glad that he picked up the camera. It is good to show you guys that it is not always sunshine and rainbows out here. Things happen and uh, yeah. They, they've definitely happened over this past week. The good news is the trailer has been fixed. The leaf springs on both sides have been replaced and it's back in good shape. I'm so thankful for the towing company that came out. They are Hill Auto located out of Long Beach, Washington. I dealt with George and the tow truck driver, Andy. They were both super kind and helpful and that is exactly what you need when you're in the middle of a stressful situation. They kept me calm and they knew what to do. Andy got out here and he MacGyvered this thing. I was so glad that we were able to drive away from the side of the road as opposed to having this thing be pulled up on a flatbed. It made things a lot less stressful. We were able to make it to the camp that we already had reservations at, which was about 13 miles away from where we broke down. And that was at Cape Disappointment. I'm so bummed that I didn't get to show you more of that campground and that campsite. It it was spectacular. We had an amazing view. I didn't want to leave in the morning, but we had to take care of business with the trailer. The initial plan was to head up here immediately after leaving that camp, but as we know, things didn't turn out that way. Let's just say things did not get any less weird once we left Oregon and got here to Washington. Joey was with me on the first night here. He is currently on a backpacking trip, but on the first night here, while we were sleeping in the middle of the night, I heard a loud boom on the roof. I did not know what it was. I assumed it was something that fell out of these big trees, like a pine cone, because I did see pine cones on the ground around. It was too late or too early in the morning to get out and see what it was. So I just thought I'll check it out in the morning. Upon getting out and checking the trailer, I noticed a huge hole in the cap that sits over a wine guard antenna. The wine guard is a Wi-Fi system that this trailer came with. I don't use it because I have Starlink. But uh, yeah, on the cap that sits on top of it, there was a huge hole. I didn't film it, but I did take a picture of it. I could not figure how this hole could have gotten there. It's on the side, not on the top. I thought potentially a bird flew into it and that's exactly what happened. Joey climbed up on the roof and looked inside and there was a dead bird in there. I feel so bad for the bird. It had to have hit it with such force. But what a freaky thing. It was in the middle of the night. I didn't know birds flew in the middle of the night. And gosh, I mean, what are the chances? <laughs> just It just kind of rattled my nerves. It just seems like such a strange thing. But we went ahead and got the bird out of there and taped it up real good with some tape for now. And I'll probably take that whole unit off of the roof since I don't use it and maybe make room for some more solar panels. That same day, I loaded up all my laundry, which is about five loads of laundry, and that's why I have no bedding on my bed, and uh, headed into Forks, Washington to do my laundry. <laughs> Wouldn't you know, on a Thursday, on May 2nd, the laundry was closed only that day because they were getting a new water heater installed. <laughs> so unfortunately, I could not do my laundry. Thankfully, I had other reasons to be there. I went ahead and washed my truck, which really needed to be done. The inside needed to be vacuumed. But yeah, I need to get back there today and get laundry done because I have company coming. <laughs> we have a very special guest arriving. Joey will be done with his trip today and tomorrow we'll be headed to the SeaTac Airport in Seattle to pick up a very special guest. So over the last couple of days, I have been doing some cleaning around here. I've organized the pantry again up here in the kitchen and over here in the coffee bar. They get out of control really easy, so I've done that and uh, obviously got my laundry ready to do today and then I'm also going to do some cleaning here around the trailer dusting mopping sweeping that kind of a thing to get ready for the guest so I'm going to share this day with you and also take you with me into forks where hopefully I can get some laundry done and just 
couple more notes on some weird things that happened. I got a sty in my left eye. <laughs> it's healing now and is almost gone. And then also I was having all kinds of computer issues when I was doing my editing of my Lost Coast backpacking trip. And if you missed that, please go back and check it out. It's an epic adventure. I think you'll absolutely love it. I will link it in the description below. But yeah, I had all kinds of computer and hard drive issues. It was a tough one to get done and out. And uh, it's just been one of those weeks. But I think things are gonna start looking up now and calming down and uh, yeah, I'm ready for it. So without further ado, let's get today rolling. Let's get this place cleaned up and get into Forks to get some laundry done. done with my cleaning for now but before I head into Forks I'm going to make myself a quick sandwich. Gotta stop and dump off some trash. We are off to Forks, Washington which is famous for either the movie or TV show Twilight. I don't know which one it is. I've never seen it so I don't know but it is famous for being the location Airport to pick up our special guests, and it's a beautiful morning. 
morning, we actually see a big yellow ball in the sky called the sun, which I haven't seen in a few days. And it looks like it's gonna be a gorgeous drive. Well, our special guest has arrived. This is Kat Coconato, Joey's little sister. Where'd you come in from, Kat? Lake Wales, Florida. Awesome, how's it feel to be in Washington? Amazing, breathtaking. Well, Kat she's gonna... is the best host ever. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you'll see more of her in the next video. Okay, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up here. We have the trailer all fixed up. We have our guest here and uh, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some fun here in Washington on the beach for the next couple of days. Might go on a little adventure. We'll wait and see how this all pans out, but it's gonna be a good time. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, I appreciate you coming along. I appreciate you watching and I will see you on the next adventure. See you soon everybody. Bye-bye.